This here is a homemade radio control for any device, that will cost you less than $10. In my case it has 4 buttons, so it could turn on and off 4 devices. But it could easily have more than just 4 buttons. The receiver is inside these high voltage electrical outlets. I've selected small components so they could fit inside here. So as you can see with a push of a button I can turn on and off each of these 4 devices. The receiver is using an Arduino and a solid state relay, so it could control high power devices, so once you plug it in, you can then control your TV, a light bulb, an AC fan or any other device, and control it remotely. But this Arduino must be powered from high voltage, because we can't use batteries inside here. So we want this to be as small as possible. So in this video we will see how you can power the receiver part. As for the transmitter remote control, it must be very low power. So using a battery it could last up to 1 year without charging. We will also see how to make a ultra low power Arduino, down to just a few microamps. So I will share the schematic, the code and the part list, so you could make this as well if you want. I will also explain the important parts from the code. So make sure that you subscribe and activate the notification bell. And if these videos help you, consider supporting me on Patreon. So guys, let's get started. JLC PCB is sponsoring this episode. Feel free to go to their website jlcpcb.com and find all their services such as low cost PCB manufacture with 24 hours build time, SMT assembly of all your components or the SMT stencil for soldering SMT components. Using their platform is very easy to order PCBs. Just go and upload your Gerber files and select the settings and for only $2 you can order 5 PCBs of any color that you want. Receive them very fast and by the way, even at this low price, the finish quality is amazing. What's up my friends, welcome back. To make this radio control relay system, we need to select 4 main parts. We need to select a good radio module depending on the price, the size, the simplicity and the most important, the power consumption. Because the remote controller must use as low power as possible. So once we have the radio module, we need to figure out how to reduce the power consumption even more by hacking the Arduino Pro Mini and also implement the low power code, which we will see in a moment. As for the receiver part, we need to find a solution to power up the Arduino and the radio module without batteries, because you want the receiver to be independent. We also have to select how to control the high voltage output, but I guess that relays are an obvious solution. So let's start by selecting the radio module. We have a lot of options. So I connect ground and power to each one and see the power consumption, without any code running. The 433 MHz module was the one with the less power consumption. As for the price, it is also the cheapest one compared with all the other options. The bad part about this radio module is the range. With a good supply for the transmitter and with the antenna connected, the range for this with a little bit of luck is 20 meters or so. I know that all the other modules have a way longer range, but in this specific case we don't need more than 20 meters, because we use this system inside of a room, so we will only use it for close range. Another good thing about this module is its simplicity, all it needs is power and one single data pin. We don't need SPI, I2C or any other kind of serial communication that would make the code and the circuit more complex. So I've decided to use the 433 MHz module. We need a transmitter and a receiver. So for this transmitter I will use an Arduino Pro Mini, the radio transmitter, a 4.2V battery that I took out from an old smartphone but you could use any other, a battery charger with a USB and 4 push buttons. We will also need a drill PCB to solder everything on it. So now that we know the parts that we need for the transmitter, let's take a look at the Arduino Pro Mini power consumption. So here I have an Arduino on my breadboard connected to a push button. Each time I press the button it will run the code for sending the data with the radio. So let's measure the power consumption. So I power the Arduino at 4.2 volts and it draws around 13.7 mA when it's not doing nothing 
and pretty much the same when I press the button. So with a battery of 500mAh and a current draw of 14mAh, the battery would last 35 hours, so less than 2 days. We want way more than that. One way to reduce power is to put the Arduino into sleep mode and wake up the Arduino when we push a button and then go back to sleep. So this here is an example code. We need to import these libraries for the power control. Then using these lines here, we make digital pin 2 to be able to trigger interruptions. Because you see, when the Arduino is in sleep mode, the void loop won't run, so we can read the digital value from the push button. So for that we create an interruption, we wake up the Arduino and then read the push button. So now with these lines here, we turn on the low power mode. There are a few modes for the low power, and each mode will have a different power consumption. So now the Arduino is in sleep mode. This here is the interruption vector. So each time digital pin 2 changes its value, this interruption will run and as you can see, it will disable sleep mode. So now the void loop will be able to run. But after 3 seconds, sleep mode is turned on once again. Ok, so let's test this code. As you can see, I power up the Arduino and in a few seconds, it goes into low power mode. And now at 4.2 volts, it draws only 4.3 milliamps, which is way less than before, but this is still too much. Also, when I press the push button, as you can see, the current value goes way up for 3 seconds. And then the Arduino goes back into sleep mode. Ok, so for now we already have 10 milliamps less current draw just by implementing the low power mode. So how can we reduce power consumption even more? Well, now is the time to take out some useless parts from the Arduino. For this project, we don't need the power on LED, so we can take that out together with the resistor. Since we power the Arduino from a battery directly to VCC, we don't need the voltage regulator neither, so we can remove this diode and the regulator as well. So I've desoldered these components from the PCB. Now let's power up the Arduino once again. This time at 4.2 volts, the current value is only 0.09 milliamps, or if you want, 90 microamps. That's amazing. When I push the button, the current value goes to 10 milliamps but then it goes back to just 90 microamps. At this rate, with a 500mAh battery, it would last 5500 hours, which are 230 days. That's a lot better. So guys, now we have our low power radio controller. I will use this schematic for this controller. I solder everything on a piece of prototyping PCB. I have 4 push buttons on one corner. The Arduino Pro Mini and the battery charger below that. And I've glued in place the radio transmitter on the other corner. Remember to also add a 433 MHz antenna. The battery is connected to this slide switch, just in case that you want to totally turn off the remote. Now let's see the receiver part. This will be connected directly to 220 volts AC from the main outlet. So for that I've decided to use this very small voltage regulator that is based on a tiny transformer. In this way the circuit will be very small and will be able to fit inside one of these electrical outlet plastic cases. This will supply 12 volts to the Arduino and a small relay. The Arduino has a 5 volts voltage regulator, so we could later supply the radio receiver as well. So basically these are all the parts that we will use for the receiver. As for the relay, we could use a coil based one or directly an SSR or solid state relay. The SSR is usually smaller, so it could fit inside smaller cases. For today examples, I've bought a few sockets and electrical outlets to test out. I'll try to put the receiver inside each one of them. But first I mount the receiver part on my breadboard, in order to give it a test. As a load I will connect a 220 volts light bulb. Each button from the transmitter will send a number from 2 to 5. In this way you could control different devices. The receiver will turn on and off the relay each time it receives the number from the transmitter. So let's see the example. Ok, so now I know that the circuit works. Now let's take a look at the code and then put this inside of the case here. 
This one is the transmitter code. We include the libraries for the low power mode. Then we have to include the library for the radio transmitter. We define the inputs from the push buttons and then in the setup void we set them to be inputs with a pull up. Using these lines here, we enable the interruption for pins D2 to D5 in order to wake up the Arduino when a push button is pressed. Finally, we put the Arduino to sleep. Now this here is the interruption vector. So each time we press a button, we first wake up the Arduino and then we detect which button was pressed. Depending on which pin, we enable the state of the TR push variable for the top right button. The L for top left and so on. Then in the void loop, if this variable is active, we send the number from 2 to 5, using this function. Then we put the Arduino back into sleep mode. Pretty easy, right? Now this here is the receiver code. Once again we need the same radio library. Because we receive values from 4 push buttons, we will control 4 different outputs. So this here is the initial state of each output which will be set to low. In the void loop, each time we receive the new data, we detect the value. If the data is a 2, we invert the state of the output pin D2, if it's a 3 of the D3 output and so on. So that's the receiver code, it's very very easy. See the codes below and also the libraries, and read them line by line in order to understand more. Ok, so this is an example for one receiver. I have this electric outlet with a switch. I will remove the switch so there will be more space for my components. I need to select something big enough to be able to place inside the Arduino, the voltage converter, the radio receiver and the relay. The space is quite small, so I've decided to take out the solid state relay from the PCB and solder it directly to my circuit. I make the same circuit but on a smaller PCB. So first I solder the small transformer to the main input of 220 volts AC and glue that inside of the case. I then glue together the relay and the small PCB. So now I place that inside of the case as well. Remember to add insulation for the wires. Then I solder thin wires to the Arduino and place it on the side. Finally I add the radio receiver. Now I close the entire case and I've decided to let the antenna on the outside for better signal. It took me some time but I was finally able to fit everything inside. Now let's test if it works. I plug this on the main outlet and automatically it will turn on. Now power on the controller as well and use the buttons. So guys, just like that you can make your own radio control electric outlet and control any device around your house. For the remote, if the battery is low, you can just plug any USB connector and charge it up. I could also 3D print a plastic case for this, in order to make it last longer and look better. You will have that design below in the description. I hope that you like this video and if so, give it a like and also consider subscribing. Also remember to activate the notification bell. And if my work helps you, consider supporting me on Patreon. Thanks again and see you later guys. Hey guys, Electrohoops here. Thank you for watching this episode. Thank you for learning and supporting my channel. And by the way, remember that I am on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and also on electrohoops.io, which is a website that you can create an account, use it to post your tutorials, use the form to get in touch with me to solve some questions, some doubts. So all the links are below. And if you want to support me, please consider uh, checking the Patreon on Patreon slash Electronoobs and select one of the tires or maybe just buy a t-shirt from my merch store and uh, or use my store. And with that you can support me and also you will be able to see my videos before the YouTube release. You can get uh, to talk with me, some questions, to see my PCBs, my files and so on. So yeah, Patreon slash Electronoobs. Thank you very much and keep up you guys.